make ANSYS Workbench work with Creo Parametric, we need to do a little setup first. We go into Programs, ANSYS 15 Utilities, and we check this CAD Configuration Manager. We want to make it work with the Workbench products, and we want to set up the Creo Parametric for the Workbench Associative Interface. We need to make sure we point to the right folder and the right executable within, say, Next, and then Configure Selected CAD Interfaces. Configuration was a success, and we we're done. Now when I open Creo, I'm going to have this ANSYS 15.0 folder, which allows me to connect to Workbench, create name selections, and those sorts of things. So let's open a file, and grab the last file I was working on, which is just a simple bracket. We'll show you how to do a couple things as set up for Workbench. In ANSYS Workbench, we tend to rely on name selections quite a lot. So I go to the ANSYS 15 tab, and you use the Creo selection, so I pick any surface. So you make sure the surface is properly selected, click Name Selection, and create a new part. It has, starts out with this prefix of NS, that's just so you can filter out the name selections that you want to work in Workbench or don't. And I would give it a name, Side, and now I see this Name Selection Side appear on the list. When I go to Workbench, that Name Selection will appear there as well, along with all these other Name Selections that I'm using for things like the uh, loading points. Another thing you might want to do is play with the parameters. So for instance, in this model I've already set up some parameters. Highlight a feature and edit, and you can see the parameter here. If I put my mouse over it, it says DS radius, and again that DS part is a filter for this parameter. If you left click to select the parameter and then hold the right mouse button, you can go to properties. And that brings up this panel here where you can enter whatever name you want for that particular parameter. And that will transfer this information to Workbench. So I say OK. Let's pick one that I haven't already defined, Base, and put my mouse over this. That one's already defined. There's one that's not yet been defined, so left click, hold down the right mouse button, Properties, and you give it a name. It looks like we've been filtering with a DS prefix, so Length. And now that DS Length appears will, will appear in my list of parameters. To transfer this over to Workbench, I just click on the Workbench button. And Workbench launches. Inside Workbench, I can right click on this. You can see the Pro E icon. I can scroll down and see the name of the part. I can see that the parameter key, this is that prefix. Name selections can be processed by turning that checkbox on. And then there's the name selection filter there, the NS. The name selections that begin with an NS prefix will be brought through. Analysis type 3D and so on. And then I can right click on this and edit this geometry in Design Modeler or Space Claim. Looking at the model and design modeler now, I can see the attach with a lightning bolt telling me I need to hit the generate button. And here's my part in Workbench. Here are all my name selections underneath the part. And you can see there's that end side that I just created. I can also attributes of this attach, and I can see the parameters that were brought in. These six parameters. So if I, for instance, was very interested in those two radiuses, I could checkbox those. And now those are turned into parameters plate thickness. So those three parameters are now ready for a parametric study. If I go and I close this, and I jump back here to Workbench, I now see that I'm connected to the parameter set bar, showing that there are input parameters. I expand that, and I can see that there are my three input parameters. If I make a change of these now, it would go and change the actual model. Just to go full circle on this, let's add a quick mechanical system. To go back to the Project tab, let's grab Static Structural. Drag and drop it on top of the geometry. Workbench automatically makes the connections across. And let's go and set up that model. So here's the model again. Uh, the most common parameter that we'll want to take as an output from this is under Geometry. You click on the actual individual part. And you scroll down to Properties and you checkbox the parameter next to mass or volume, depending on which one you want to minimize. So we'll probably want to minimize mass. So that is now an output parameter. The moment that I check that output parameter, if I go back to Workbench, I see that I have this output parameter coming back to the parameter set bar, and I can look here in the parameter set bar and see my mass as an output. Going back to Mechanical, to complete the setup, then we would go down to Static Structural. We would want to apply supports, maybe a fixed support. And now the key here is that you want to apply those supports based on a name selection. So we change this geometry selection to name selection, and then name selection, and we pick the one that we want. So 
So let's t let's use the support holes. And next thing we'll want is some loads. So let's apply a force. And again, we're going to apply the load to a named selection. This way, if we replace the model with another model that has the same name selections, we won't have to redo this setup. And we're going to apply this at force 1. And we're going to have a force by magnitude 100. We're going to scale this later. And you can see here there's a force. Easily create another force. Again, with a name selection on force 2 and magnitude again will be 100. Let's see if it picked the right direction. No, it's going the wrong way. So we're going to click to change it. We'll flip the direction the other way and apply. And now that direction is going the right way. Now to set up the actual solve, you can do things like you click on the solution, deformation, we want total deformation. We're also going to look at equivalent von Mises stress. And we want to turn the maximum into a parameter. like that. And again, if I jump back to Workbench and I look at my parameter manager now, you can see I've got a number of these parameters. So that's all there is to it. Let's just hit the update solve here and solve our problem. So that gives us a single result. We can animate it. We can look at total deformation. We can look at equivalent stress. There's all sorts of other you know, graphics things we could do here. We could display it in all different ways. But what we really want to do is understand how the parameters affect these results and how they affect the max deformation and the max equivalent stress. So let's close this and we'll look at this table on the right. What this shows is that the current design point has all these different parameters and then it starts to give us some output parameters. We've got total deformation, we've got equivalent stress, and we got weight. So we can just try a few different things. Let's try what happens if we set this first one to 25 and we reduce that little tiny fillet radius to 6 and we increase the overall thickness of the part to 60. How does that affect our mass? And so on, we could try, what if this stays at 20 but uh, the, this stays at 65 but this one goes down to 45. So you could pick individual items and update selected. You could use control, you could pick multiple ones, update selected, or you can just say update all design points. And what Workbench now does is it's driving ProE from Workbench, it will go back, you'll see ProE will actually launch, it will use the ProE libraries in the background to generate the new model with these parameters, bring that model back into Workbench, apply the mesh again, extract information like the mass, extract them, and then it will run the solve and we'll extract this other information and you'll be able to see how these things play out. We call this a what if study. So there's the first design point has come in. It's using the actively running uh, C to ProE down here. Now it's working on the second one. You can show progress. I think it's interesting that the mass comes in first because it solves that first and then it solves the, the rest of the solution. All right, so we're able to solve those. If you wanted to do more than these or have things happen more automatically, you can go back to your project and you can drag and drop a design exploration system. Design Explorer is a set of tools to do things like Six Sigma analysis, response service optimization, and so on. And if we drag one of these out here, it includes a component for design of experiments that lets you automatically generate design of experiments. You enter things like the, uh, the lower bound and upper bound, and it goes and generates. If I say preview now, you'll see it'll give me a full list of designs that I don't have to manually create. But this is a long list that will actually end up being solved. You can go and hit update, and it'll go and generate all those solutions. Thank you very much.